In quality control, we're concerned with the ability to detect out-of-control conditions when they occur, before they produce too many bad results. So let's take a look at that case. The upper panel shows the same timeline for glucose results. The lower panel shows measurement errors again. But now we are going to include quality control results as part of the testing stream. We're going to test two levels of QC material every 50 patient samples. Level 1 is at 60 mg per deciliter and level 2 is at 130 mg per deciliter. The diamonds represent the QC results. We begin the process with a QC event. The measurements are around 60 and 130. Here we see the measurement error for those results. In this case, the measurement errors are both close to zero. We're going to continue to assume a TEA of plus or minus 10%, a CV of 2.5%, and that the lab is using a 1-3S, 2-2S, and R-4S QC rule combination. These two QC results are within 1 SD of their assigned values. Therefore, the QC rule is accepted. So we're going to test patient results. The point in time where the yellow triangles appear is the point that a systematic 5% shift down in the process occurred. That happened 27 patient results prior to the next set of QCs. You can very clearly see the 2 CV shift downward in the measurement errors. Prior to the yellow triangles, the blue dots are centered around zero. Now they're scattering around minus 2s. It's easy to appreciate the effect of the 5% shift down in the distribution of measurement errors. However, if we look at the actual glucose results, it's not at all apparent that a shift has occurred. Here we see our next two QCs. One is between 2 and 3 SDs below its target, and the other is almost at its target, so the QC rule isn't going to be violated. Therefore, we continue to produce results that are adversely affected by this out-of-control condition. Now we see two results that fail to meet the quality requirement. Note that all of the results are being affected by the 5% shift but only two of the 77 results that have been affected failed to meet the quality requirement of plus or minus 10% measurement error. If you look at the actual glucose levels for the two points that failed to meet the quality requirement, there is no indication that those points are not fit for their intended use. Let's continue testing. Here, we get another unacceptable result. Notice that we are also keeping count of how many incorrect patient results have been produced. So far we've seen three. Two occurred prior to the last acceptable QC, and one has occurred since the last accepted QC. So, we've accepted QC three times since the 5% shift occurred, and we have 127 patient results that have been affected. So, we continue testing and get another acceptance and another unacceptable result. Now we have a total of four. We continue testing and get another QC rule acceptance. Finally, on the sixth try, we get a QC rule rejection. We now have a QC result that is more than three SDs below its target. So in this case, where a 5% shift has occurred, it took six QC events to detect it, and 277 patient results were affected by the out-of-control condition. Seven of those 277 were unacceptable. Three of those have occurred since the last acceptable QC event, and four were prior to the last acceptable QC.